No, thank you. Let's not stay in this town. We've spent 30 seconds in Raccoon City, and it's clear that we don't want to live here. This is 2021's Resident Evil Welcome to Raccoon City. Everyone already knows that I'm a huge fan of video game movies, so here's hoping this one isn't too bad. Spoiler alert, while I might be giving you my opinion on the movie, that's no substitute for watching it for yourself. Links to the film are in the description. Claire tries to tell her brother Chris that this weird hunchback girl is visiting them at night in the orphanage, but he blows her off and tells her to go back to bed. Claire doesn't listen and she wanders the orphanage until she comes to a playroom where she finds the girl again. She tries to talk to the girl, but the girl lets her read her tag on her arm to find out her name is Lisa Trevor. When Claire asks where she stays, Lisa scribbles on a piece of paper that she comes from below. As Claire goes into the tent to get a closer look, she's pulled out by Dr. Birkin. As he asks why she's up and about at night, Chris shows up and tells him that she sleepwalks sometimes, and Birkin says, them both back to bed. As they lie in bed, Birkin looks over the poor orphans and Lisa pays Claire one last visit to leave her a toy. We haven't even gotten to infected people yet and I can already tell that being here is a bad idea. Why would anyone come back here once they make it out? Well, leave it to Claire to be the exception. Flash forward to 1998 and Claire is hitchhiking with a nasty truck driver to go back to Raccoon City. As the driver talks crap to Claire about the city, he tries to convince her to stay in the truck and accompany him to the next town instead. He was going so fast that this woman is just along for the ride now. She didn't have a chance to roll off or under the truck. She almost looked like she's holding on to get to Raccoon City too, but anyone that has played Resident Evil 2 knows where this is going. The trucker eventually skids to a halt and they get out to check on the woman. After confirming that she's dead, Claire tries to get the driver to help her bring the woman into town to tell Chris, who's now a cop. As they stand there arguing about it, the woman stands back up and just walks off into the woods. Woods. The dog in the truck is the only one that notices, and it jumps out to lick up the woman's blood that is pulled in the middle of the road. Now that the woman is gone, the trucker decides that this is a good time to just leave the scene. As we get some information on the screen, we find out that the city is turning into a ghost town since Umbrella Corporation is getting ready to leave town. Meanwhile, we meet Leon Kennedy who is waking up to get ready for his shift as a rookie cop. He heads for the local cafe where he goes back to sleep, and a few of the remaining stars agents mess with him. Here we meet Jill and Wesker. There's also another agent named Richard Aiken, but he probably won't be around long. He's not one of the known names. We all know who's gonna make it here if they do this reboot right. Soon two other officers come in to get coffee and they tell the agents that they are investigating a chewed up body at the Spencer mansion. Yep, we're going to the mansion. Once Leon is left alone in the cafe with the waitress, he notices that her eye has started to bleed, and she just brushes off like it's a normal thing. Then a bird flies straight into the window, and when they look outside, they see that it is contorting in all sorts of ways and suffering from something else. Across town, Claire is finally dropped off in town, and the trucker notices that his dog is starting to look a little sick. When he checks on the dog, it ends up biting his hand. Claire heads to Chris's house, but there's no answer, so she heads to the back door where she breaks in after making awkward eye contact with the neighbors. Once inside, Claire snoops through some of Chris's things and she even finds a picture of Chris and Birkin that looks like it's pretty recent. Then Chris comes downstairs and he doesn't seem too surprised that Claire just broke in at midnight. Claire reveals that she got some inside info of something sinister going on in town, and she plays a VHS tape of a local that she met in an online chat room. The man on the tape is Ben, and he tries to say that Umbrella Corporation has poisoned the water. Chris blows her off yet again and he goes to get ready for work. In the middle of town, Birkin goes to check on his daughter who just woke up screaming, but a phone call pulls him away. Whatever he heard on the other end was enough to make him tell his family to pack and hurry to leave. Soon sirens go off in the town and it becomes clear that something has gone terribly wrong. Back at Chris's house, he heads out and tells Claire to lock up behind her, but she doesn't get that far. Finally, things are picking up now. I can't lie though. We all saw her running at the door, but for some reason, I really didn't think she was gonna go straight through it. Maybe slam up against it like some bad Looney Tunes character, but when she burst through and kept coming, it really hit that these weren't gonna be your traditional slow infected. 
Claire throws the woman off of her and rushes outside where she hops on Chris's bike. In the center of town, Chris, Jill, Weskers, Vickers, and the Richard guy are getting a briefing from Chief Irons, who tells him that he has no idea what the sirens are going off for. Leon is there as well, but the rookie cop is kept behind the desk. While they listen, Wesker gets a message on his beeper that tells him that it is time. He goes to check his locker, and he sees a Palm pilot has been left there with information on his secret mission. It also tells him that the city will be destroyed at 6 in the morning. Across town, Claire is zooming through the streets on the bike, and Birkin is speeding through with his family as well. He narrowly misses running into Claire, but they make quick eye contact and realize who each other are. Now we get a flashback of Birkin taking Claire from the orphanage. Then we see the truck driver and his dog speeding through the town at record speeds. The truck soon tips in front of the police station and explodes. For a minute there, I was about to compliment the movie for how it was actually kind of sticking to source material and giving us an excellent feeling of dark ambiance. Then that happened. While a little humor isn't necessarily a bad thing, it's not really the style that goes with Resident Evil. We'll see though. Chief Irons shoots the man down and Leon puts out the fire and locks the door. When he goes to ask Irons what they should do, he finds him packing up his office and Leon ends up being left in charge. Meanwhile, the STARS agents investigate the missing officers that went to investigate the Spencer mansion. Soon, Richard finds the trail that leads them there. Also, I'm sorry, Richard was actually in the original game, but he didn't make it very far once inside, so he's not really a memorable character. Once inside, the crew splits up to search for the officers. In town, Irons makes his way to the town boundary where armed people are keeping citizens from leaving the city. When shooting breaks out, he manages to drive back into the city. Umbrella employees radio back and tell headquarters that the town is locked down and contained. Irons makes it back to the parking garage of the police station, but he hears something else in there with him. He goes back to his car to reload his gun. A <laughs> classic scare in a new location. It's always the dogs that get us when it comes to the really good scares. It looks so savage. Luckily for Irons, Claire makes it to the garage and beats the dog to death with a fire extinguisher. Now we've got Claire, Irons, and Leon locked in at the station as infected people gather at the gates. Claire heads to the armory and Irons goes to radio the star seem to get the helicopter back. Back in the mansion, Wesker follows a map that is on the Palm Pilot he got, while the other team continues to sweep the facility. Soon they come across the legendary first zombie. It's eating one of the missing officers, and as it approaches Chris, he unloads multiple rounds into the man before he goes to the ground. Chris tries to save the officer, and he sends Richard to look for the second one. Hey, Richard is actually making it pretty far. Kudos to a doomed character. Well, I take that back. The timing for that was too perfect though. Downstairs, the officer Chris was helping ends up dying, and he's attacked as well. He barely makes it out of the grasp of multiple zombies, but now a whole swarm of them is approaching. Back at the helicopter, Vickers is waiting for the team to come back, but he doesn't see the bloody hand sliding down the window. Yeah, he's gone too. Wesker and Jill make their way into the library where Wesker plays notes on a piano that the pilot tells him to, and a secret passage opens up in the shelves. Suddenly, Jill notices the helicopter as it comes crashing through the window, but they narrowly escape the explosion. At the police department, Claire and Leon search the army for weapons, and it becomes clear that Leon has never really handled weapons before. Then they hear someone calling out to them from a hidden cell in the basement. Leon goes to check it out, and it turns out that Ben and another sick man have been kept down there. Ben ends up telling Leon about the T-virus and G-virus, and he explains that it turns the sick people into weapons. Just as Leon unlocks the cell door, the other man goes full infected and takes a huge bite out of Ben before turning his attention to Leon. Thank you, Claire, for coming to the rescue. Seriously, why is Leon a cop anyways? He has literally done nothing but become the victim the entire night so far. He does finish off the zombie when it comes back to life, though. If it wasn't for Claire, at least two main characters would be dead by now. Back in the mansion, Wesker and Jill recover from the explosion, and they see the hidden passage. Wesker explains that he was hired to find Umbrella's secrets and expose them. Jill tries to bring him back to the good side, but the nerds here all knew that this 
this wasn't gonna happen. This whole time, I thought they were trying to change who Wesker was, so I've been waiting for this character change. He can never be the good guy. Back at the police station, the three survivors make their way out to try and get to the mountains where the mansion is. Just two hours before the destruction of the city, they make it back to the orphanage that Claire grew up in. She finds out that there is a secret passage that leads to the mansion, but Leon ends up running into Lisa Trevor, who is all grown up now. And here we see another long-awaited creature after it kills Chief Irons. Don't run, I have to say that the liquor design is actually pretty good though. This movie is actually staying pretty close to the source material. After Lisa kills the liquor, Claire recognizes her and she knows that Lisa knows exactly where the secret passage is. Once Lisa recognizes her as her childhood friend, she leads them to the same room that Claire was taken to by Birkin, the playroom where she met Lisa for the first time. Lisa gives her the keys and after she unlocks the door in the wall, Claire thanks her for her help. It turns out that it's actually an elevator and Leon presses the button. Inside the mansion, Chris is still taking down Infected as he looks for any other survivors from his team. Just when he's about to be taken over by an Infected officer, Jill shows up and saves him. Then she tells him about how Wesker betrayed him, but she thinks that following him is their only way out. At the same time, Claire and Leon make it to the facility, and they find footage of testing Umbrella did with the kids from the orphanage. Then we get to Wesker, and we see him run into Birkin who is packing up samples with his family. This is where you can tell that Wesker ended up getting the short and simple backstory instead of the one they gave him in the games. He's a huge part of multiple entries, but here he just seems like a dirty cop. Him and Birkin end up shooting each other, but Wesker still goes to get the samples. Birkin's wife tries to shoot him, but he kills her first. Birkin's daughter, on the other hand, seems to get away with the case of samples. When Wesker goes to finish the job with Birkin, we see that he has injected himself with the virus. When Wesker goes to leave, the daughter goes to shoot him, but Jill shoots him from behind first. After a touching little interaction, he tells Jill that they need to get to a secret train before Umbrella destroys the city, and then he dies. Afterwards, we see Birkin is back to life and starts to mutate. I know they already left, but I think it's time to start running through these halls instead of creeping along. Birkin literally mutates as he walks, and I honestly couldn't be happier to see that they're including so much in this movie. Look at him! Pretty soon, I should be popping up all over his big arm. When they hear Birkin roar, Chris decides to stay behind to buy Jill and the girl some time, and Birkin starts to toy with him as the mutation takes over even more. Sure enough, he finds Chris, but leave it to Claire to save the day. She unloads multiple shotgun shells into him, but Chris stops her from finishing him off so he can. He shoots Birkin in the eye with his piddly little handgun. We all know that he has nothing over the shotgun Claire just downed him with. Stop leaving these things to chance. Make sure and finish it. Rookie? Yeah, trust me, I'm as surprised as you are, buddy. Same here. He would have been the first one dead if it weren't for supporting characters. Oh, also, Birkin isn't dead and he's mutating even more. Told you. The survivors make it to the train and Leon fires it up. As the train speeds through the tunnel, Chris apologizes for being a crappy brother who ignores his sister for decades. Then 6 a.m. comes. The entire mansion collapses in on itself and a shockwave goes throughout all of Raccoon City. As the tunnel collapses, the train careens off of the tracks and comes to a halt. Suddenly, they hear banging on top of the train. A giant mutated Birkin rips the train apart and I scream I told you so at the screen. As Claire gets snatched up, Chris shoots him with his little handgun, and Claire still does a better job of saving herself with a knife while she's being squeezed by Birkin. What good are Chris and Leon? As I say that, Leon shows up with a rocket launcher and destroys Birkin. Nice. Up top, we see that all of Raccoon City gets swept away by the shockwave, and we see the survivors exit the tunnel as Umbrella declares that there are no survivors in the city. Then the credits roll. But wait, there's more! Everyone knows that since Marvel started doing that mid credit scene crap, every major franchise has to do the same thing now. Soon we see Wesker wake up in a body bag, and I once again say, I told you so. My name is Ada Wong. Of course, they reveal one of the best characters in the entire franchise in the last 30 seconds. Hopes for a sequel? 
it's Resident Evil. Just like its zombies, it'll never die. It was definitely cringy at times, and the CGI was a little distracting from time to time. Still, you can definitely tell that a fan of the series was in charge here, and I love this as a reboot to a series that didn't even look like the source material anymore. Here's hoping for a sequel in the near future. Here's some other zombie style recaps to check out. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next and I'll see you in the next video.